Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Gay from Scratch. Today we are talking about Opticon. Doesn't that sound like something you'd hear on Transformers? Opticon, transform and roll out. But anyways, it's not a Transformer. What it is, is a WYSIWYG uh, level editor for the Love Game Engine. Now, the Love Game Engine, I'm going to do a quick preamble on that. Don't worry, uh, we'll get to Opticon in probably about, say, a minute. Uh, but Love itself is a cross-platform Lua-based game engine. Um, the, there was a number of them that kind of came out around the same time. There was Gitteros, Moy, uh, Kur oh, can't say that word. Uh, solar, whatever it's called now, and there was Love. Now, Love is uh, available Windows, Mac OS, Linux, Android, and iOS. Obviously, it is all about creating games. It's a very straightforward framework. You kind of what you type in code is kind of what you see up on screen. It really kind of reminded me of programming in BASIC back in the day using like a simple graphics library, and in fact. Uh, when it came time to make my own uh, here's how you create a game from the very beginning for absolute beginners tutorial series, which by the way is still relevant like five or six years later, I chose love. Uh, oh, that sounds weird. Uh, Lua and love as my, my topics here because frankly, it's really, really easy to learn. So if you're looking for a way to start making games, uh, Lua and love is a great combination. I will link to this tutorial series as well. So if you want to go through it, it's a set of Lua tutorials, kind of gives you the basics of programming with Lua, and then a set of love tutorials that gets you through the framework, doing things like drawing sprites, handling input, and so on. Now, love, uh, sorry, yeah, love 2D is in fact a framework. It is not a game engine. That means it's missing certain things like tools. You do not have a level editor in there. There's community stuff out there for making it so you can work with tiled and so on. But that is where Opticon comes into the equation. So this is Opticon. The website is available at opticon.co.uk, also known as UK. Uh, it is a very straightforward level editor. There are a few warts here. It, it's still ongoing in development, uh, but you can use it to create levels. And basically you're creating levels and you're generating those levels. It is creating code. So you can download it. It is sadly Windows only and binary, but it will run on a Wine for both Mac OS and Linux. Uh, the download is available here. I will link this uh, page down below. So if you want to go ahead and grab it, uh, it's automatically downloading. Stop that. Stop that. And one of the interesting things I did find on their website, though, is it runs on Windows only. The other two off of Wine. <laughs> but for some reason, they use a MacBook Air uh, for, their, for their background image here. I don't get that one, but... That's either here nor there. So let's go and take a look at Opticon. And this is it in action. It's a pretty straightforward program. The entire idea basically is you're just bringing things in and visually arranging them. So let's start with a couple of assets I used for my uh, Godot 2D, 2D game tutorial. So if you want these to actually follow along, uh, check out the Godot 2D complete step-by-step -step game tutorial on dev game. Uh, but let's do it here. This guy will bring in a background image. We'll position it at zero and zero. We'll go ahead and select our image. It's available here. BG, uh, we'll grab that guy right there. There you go. So we can center it or not center it, bring it in, and then boom. So now we have our background. We can move it around like so. Now, one of the things that I find a little frustrating with this setup is um, the, uh, first off, the window size is set to your window resolution. So if you want to scroll around and you got to do it this way, I would really prefer that it took a reverse approach and made it so that the window resolution was shown on screen and it used your full editing surface instead. Uh, so you can see here, my, my current window resolution is 763 by 510. So let's say I want to go ahead and change that. I go here to window resolution and I'll say instead 1200 by 900. We can do full screen or not, and then boom, you're going to see, okay, now we've got a little bit more of the screen being used. Again, I do wish that instead they represented the resolution on screen and by default just used up this entire area. The, the reverse process doesn't make a lot of sense to me. All right, so there we've got our background in place. Now I'm going to go ahead and add another image, uh, so like say a foreground sprite, and I'm going to come in here and call this, let's say, player. Uh, zero and zero, we could center it or not, but I'm gonna just go ahead, grab this guy, grab a different graphic for that guy. So let's go in here and grab one of my player sprites and boom. All right, so we got a jet coming into our world. Go ahead, drop it in, and now we can move it around. Now you're gonna notice in the editor, we're showing um, legacy effects. So we're showing the transparency effect where it isn't actually there. When you run the game, transparency will look fine, but for some reason in the editor, uh, it, it's a bit ugly. We're actually seeing a couple of these things where when you're in the editor, you're not actually getting full WYSIWYG because what you see when you run your game doesn't naturally match or 100% match. Hopefully this will get fixed in time, but I'll give you an example right now. So let's go ahead and add some text. So we'll go ahead We'll call this the title. Zero, zero, sure, fine. Uh, we'll go ahead and select a font for it right here. 
Anime Ace, sure. So now I've created it. I'm going to create this guy as a 64 point font. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to call it uh, my title, like so. And I can do my color RGB or I can pick from a thing. So here we're going to do a violet there. Yeah. All right. So now you're going to notice there is my title. Okay. So that obviously isn't as WYSIWYG as what we'd like. The kicker is, you know, let me just move this guy over here right now. If I go ahead and we run this project, so in order to do that, I'm gonna have to save my level. Um, YouTube Demo Opticon. Save, and we'll save that to temp, of course, because my temp file is probably in the 100 gigabyte range by now. All right, so there we go. We've now saved it. I could go ahead and run now, and you're gonna see when I run it, we get our font and we get our color and we get proper transparency. And yeah, it, it's kind of a small thing, but hopefully that is something that gets resolved in time as well. So that uh, the text rendering and the transparency rendering is not fully WYSIWYG. And then interestingly enough, um, so my background is theoretically in front of, and this doesn't seem to be working the way it's supposed to be. So for uh, Z ordering, or this isn't really Z ordering, this is actually changing the code order that things are drawn in. When you're in the editor, it's not working right, but when you're running your game, it will work right. So if I move this guy down and then have the background in front, the background will draw over top of my character, but for some reason, it's not being properly represented in the on-screen editor. Again, it should be a relatively simple fix. Hopefully, it's something that we see happen. So as I've been editing these things, I could go ahead one more thing now. Let's do a background sound. So let's come in here, and we'll go to Assets, Audio, there, Sound. All right, so we've got some music that'll play when we run our game, and let's go ahead, we'll run our game. And let me just... Turn my speaker sound up, there, there you go. Now you're gonna notice our plane is missing. And that is because, again, the plane ordering. So move that guy up again. Let's go ahead and run once again. And there we are back. So uh, the back to front ordering isn't actually being represented in the editor, but you can see how you can use Opticon to easily start sketching out levels. Now the astute among you may have noticed that as I was doing all of these things, we were getting this guy over here, and that's basically, this is what Opticon is all about. And if you've ever wanted to see Lua or Love Code, hey, it's a two for one. So there's a built-in editor here, you click the little pencil icon and it will pop up. And you'll see here, here is the code that has been generated by our actions. So when we set the Windows resolution, that's ultimately what it does. So Opticon is ultimately a code generator at the end of the day. There's no proprietary level format or anything. There's its own project format so you can save it and reload later. But Opticon is basically generated generating Lua code for you. Now, unfortunately, and hopefully this is something they can add later on, components added programmatically will not appear in the visual level designer. So if you start adding code here, they won't be back here. It'd be nice to see that that gets added at some point in time, but you can see basically it is setting up all the code we need to draw, all the various different things in the right order and so on. Um, so that is the end result. We've also got the ability to export our code out as a Lua file if we so wish. And there's also an option up here that we can convert Lua to opts. What does that mean? Honestly, I don't actually know. Now, if you are ready and done, you can export your project out into a game ready format right here. You pick the, uh, the Lua file that you want to go ahead with, pick the directory you want it to export as, and that will create your program to go with. And essentially that is it. So there's a few things that I, obviously that I would like to see tweaked here. Uh, we need a bit more WYSIWYG in the level editor, but this is pretty early on. So, uh, you know, give it some time, uh, but it would be nice to see the actual font be uh, shown and the size of the font be shown that you're actually creating. Again, some of the um, Z ordering stuff here isn't being represented in the editor like it is in the game. And, you know, there over here in terms of your scene graph over here, um, the, these changes aren't being represented until the game actually runs. But other than that, it is the core of a really interesting project for sure. One that I think is definitely worth keeping your eyes on, especially if you are uh, working with Love and Lua and you know, you're missing the traditional uh, drag and drop kind of profile to get you know your levels up and going to start with. Opticon could be a great choice for that. And uh, yeah, so once again, if you are interested in picking up Lua and Love, uh, I do have a full tutorial series. I will link this with the linked article down below. But one thing that was glaringly missing all along 
has been a level editor. There have been previous level editors in the past for uh, the Love framework, but uh, Opticon definitely uh, looks like a nice, polished, and interesting one. Again, there's a couple of warts to get rid of, uh, but for the most part, it's uh, it's the genesis of an interesting project. So if you're in that space, a great one to check out. And if you're looking for a nice, friendly, beginner programming language slash game framework combination, uh, Lua and Love is a great choice. Okay, so that is it. Let me know what you think of Opticon. Comments down below, and I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.